I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather is clear. Can Hello, racing fans, and welcome back to another edition, or the final 2019 yep. edition of Handicapper's Corner uh, for Hastings Racecourse from the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads, along with Drew Forrester. We're going to go through the Sunday, October the 27th program. Nine races on tap. Closing day. Things kick off at 1.50. Don't forget Breeders' Cup fast approaching. And, yes. Uh, next we will do a Breeders' Cup show. Yes, we will do a Breeders' Cup preview next week. Stay tuned. Uh, as I mentioned uh, at the end of the last show, we still have a few seats. We are almost full, but you can give us a call. 604-536-2978 to get your spot. Here at the Derby Barn Grill, closing day, as Mike mentioned, nine races on tap. It kicks off with a maiden four for three and up. Like this horse last time, those are the $8,000 category, taking another drop down to the $4,000 category. Number one, Jack Don't Drink, Jose Asensio. What an mm -hmm. end of the He's season. He's been on a roll. For one, the end of the season that uh, Rob Mabins had the last month. Mm -hmm. He's been on fire. And Jose Asensio since the beginning of August. Both stakes last weekend. If this kid... Uh, both allowance for his. This kid had started the season, been healthy. I mean, he would be right there in, mm -hmm. in, in the rider standings as well. He'd be right there, which is coming down to the last day between Amadeo, Enrique, and Antonio Reyes. Keep an eye on that. Uh, for me, Jack Don't Drink on top. First time starter out of the Glen Todd barn. Very interesting here. Ducati gets Antonio Reyes, uh, three year old son of Taylor Ducati, out of the stakes winning mare, Castanet Dancer. She was a, actually a Washington yeah. champion as well. Uh, first out of the box for 4000 Going to have it on the ticket. Got it in the second spot. And I don't mind uh, Rob's other horse. Another one ran fourth behind I Kiss Ivy, My Grand Valentine, and Irish Charlie in a maiden. Eight blinkers go off. Roki goes on. Down to four. I threw him in for third. One four. One four five, sorry. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think it's one four. Yeah. yeah I, I yeah. agree. Uh, Jack Don't Drink. Well, someone's going to break their maiden uh, on closing day finally after a, a long season. But Jack Don't Drink, uh, those races are are quite good, and uh, I think he might be the one, but I wouldn't be surprised if Glenn Furster, uh, Ducati, was able to pull it yeah. off, so you got to have them both. And, and for third, I put in the three-horse sweet Prince of Mine. He's actually, the last couple of races have been very good for trainer Dave Mulburn. Mm -hmm. Leary seats are in, returns to the saddle, so well, he might need all three of them, but uh, one, four, three in the Sunday opener on a race number two. We get some fillies and mares here. Uh, 6250 claimers going six and one half furlongs. Looks like Phil Hall's got a good shot in here with the inside two horses, GMT Baby and Tattooed Kitty. Uh, I don't think you'll see a huge speed duel. I think Tattooed Kitty might be able to wrestle the lead away from her stable mate, but we'll see. But I like Tattooed Kitty to win it. Uh, just a tough trip last time. Repeats her August uh, 26th race where she ran second to uh, Yes Please and defeated Bad and Bougie. That kind of race wins the money today. So I'll try Tattooed Kitty over the five, Bad and Bougie, and I put the one horse GMT baby in for third. I left out Sweet 16. Uh, it's had some good trips and. You know, I've been running for four grand. Uh, I just took all the horses coming out of the 6250 races. Those are way stronger fields. So I went two, five, and one. I'm going to take a shot on the Cloutier runner. I'm going to take oh, a shot on favorite, Sweet 16. But still, it's, just the fact that yeah. she's, you know, when mares get good, Phillies get good, and she's going the right way. Yeah. Her last two starts, uh, wins a four and on three, then right in open and company wins fairly comfortably again over Amherst Seed, who came as reserve. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it sets up well for her. She sits just off the pace, and Amadeo Perez is going to be hungry, not out of the running for lead and rider. And I put uh, the two Phil Hall runners behind her, GMT Baby and Tattooed Kitty in second and third. They both had uh, good years. 412 for me in the second. On to the third, 6250. Phillies and Mares going a mile 16th. Uh, tough to get by Mousy Mousy. She's been, uh, well, she's run 10 times this year. She's had five wins. And uh, a lot of times when she wins, she wins big. Went down to Emerald Downs, won by nine. Uh, won, won a non of the year here. Uh, yeah, well, she wins. She, she by seven, uh, just one for 62 50 sprinting. She can go long, she can do both. Versatile Philly on the Rob Gilkebarn. For me, Mousy Mousy on top of our Revel Lady, who ran second to her last time. No clever pick there. Uh, she's her, Last time she uh, went long, she won. And uh, I threw in uh, the Cloutier runner, Playgirl Pixie. Last time she went long, she won her four non two. I just threw in, her in for third. Two, three, one. Yeah, I agree. Mousy Mousy uh, looks like a solid key in your early pick fours or any wagers you want to yeah. use. Mousy Mousy looks miles the best in here. I put our Revel Lady and Fast Bid in behind. I, I just changed your numbers a yeah. bit. But Mousy Mousy is just a standout. Looks Ooh, like the one. Going to sit second. Going to get a great trip and just... Uh, Repeat the last race or any of her races, she wins by a mile. Two, three, two, three, four for me in the third. Fourth race, a five horse field of $4,000 claimers that have not won a race this year, non for a lifetime. Uh, going a mile on the 16th, uh, I ended up on the five horse Ace Deuce. It was a good runner up to Will the Gold last time. Sat, sat close to some pretty fast fractions and it kind of got him late as he was a little empty down the stretch and mm -hmm. Will the Gold blew him away. But uh, he is coming back in just a week and, uh, but there isn't a, 
pile going on, a uh, pile of speed going on in here. I think another Guinness might go, and uh, maybe Hart set again. Ace Deuce could get another nice trip sitting mm -hmm. in third, and hopefully they slow it down a little bit. But I like Ace Deuce to defeat the one Cyclone Dan, who's on the class drop. Uncharacteristically, was flat last time. Um, you know, maybe it's the company, but still, he did lose to his stable mate. He's got ego, which uh, I didn't see that coming. Uh, he yeah, and I don't know. He just didn't run a. a the usual Cyclone Down race. Uh, you've been so good since the claim, a great claim uh, by the connections. But uh, Cyclone Down, I put in for second, but easily could win the race. And I put Hart set for third. I don't have a lot to add. I like Ace Deuce and Cyclone Down. I put Ace, I got, I got in the same order, but yeah. I mean, I, I would have those two. I think it's, right. it's one, one, of the, one of those two uh, in your early pick four. Uh, I went 5 1. I threw in Hart set for third, too, but I really like 5 and 1. Mm -hmm. 5 1 3 for me as well. On to the fifth. 16 non three for three up Colts of Gullies. Non wears a three lifetime. You can, this is a good race. The, the last race there was two I liked and earlier on, Mousy Mousy. This is a race I would take a few. Uh, you can make a case for a bunch of these. I like the chances are this is, I mean, look at his record. He's running in these 16 likes non threes. He likes to run second a lot. Uh, what is that? It's one, two, three, four, five, six. His last six races, he's had five seconds and a third. Uh, Amadeo Perez aboard. I don't see a lot of other speed in here. I think he can get the lead. Probably Fort Langley being on his inside, but I think the chances are is the best speed horse in here. I'm going to take the chances are over Fort Langley. I threw in Harry's Hammer. Uh, this is a horse that needed a class relief. He got it last time. Ran third behind Master Ewan and uh, Fort Langley. I think he'll be tough. Uh, I just like the chances are he can go long. Last time he ran long, he ran second behind Rex City, but he's coming off a big second behind Little Groot in that fast heat of 116 and two, got a 75 bar. I'm going to take the chances are over Fort Langley and Harry's Hammer. 5 3 4 for me, but uh, this is a pretty wide open event. Yeah, I see a lot of speed in here. I see Mosley yeah. going for sure. He's a 22 flat horse. He's quick, yeah. He's got to go. Fort Langley's going. The chances are it's going to be up there. Rack City has to stay close. Uh, Harry's Hammer should get it. I like Harry's Hammer. I'm yeah. going to try him. I can see that. Uh, tr you know, did encounter some trouble last time. Uh, Enrique Gonzalez yeah, jumps aboard. There, there's a lot of positives. Lot of, yeah. no, shouldn't get into any, any troubles this time. A better draw. Had an outside post last time, and just just a little smaller field. Should get an ideal trip, which I think Harry should suit Harry's hammer to a T. I, I have Fort Langley is the horse to beat. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I just got uh, a no narrow loss to Master yeah. Ewan last time after doing all the the fighting on the head end and uh, ran a big race. And I put the one horse full of low chain for third. Just another off the pace horse. Made an early run last time and flat. No, gets from Mario Saunders now. Uh, I went four, three, and one. I'm gonna try Harry's hammer to maybe knock off the favorite. Just a, it, nine starts for uh, chances are this year. Seven of them in the money. Don't even have them in the money. No, I'm sorry. I didn't. I don't think he wants to out. That's the only. Thing. Six <laughs> he has. He has. He has better sprinting. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Six three. So started late. Pick four. Uh, Twenty five thousand dollar. Uh, two year old winners here going six and a half furlongs. Their first uh, two year old winners race for the. Claiming types. Uh, got a mixed bag of fillies in here and some colts. Mm -hmm. So there is quite a bit of speed in the race, though, with some gold on the stretch out. The two horse, the three Queen's Park lights, the flash speed, the four, everything's quiet. It's been trying to bash heads with infinite patience throughout a lot of the year. Walk in the walk has speed. Torino Grand is fast. Uh, uh, Torino Grand has looked so good winning last yeah. time. I'd, even if he does get Force three or four wider on the first turn. I still think he may be good enough to just tough, keep on rolling. Tough to, to look like. Uh, yeah. He is in for the 20. He wouldn't be in this race if it was just a straight 25 claimer, but he's waiver protected because yeah. he ran for 25 last time. And I just think he's, he, he's going to be really dangerous in here. Put the eight horse, a uh, bookie in for second on the class drop. Broke his maiden for 25 grand and and tackled stakes horses in the Futurity and then the Ascot grad. Didn't get much luck in any of those races, had dreadful no, trips. And those are, it's a good good year for two-year-olds, uh, the boys especially, more competitive. It was a deep group with Capilano yeah. Canyon, back to her synergy. There were a lot of nice colts. Uh, and so, you know, Bookie taking on those horses, not surprising he finished off the board. And up at the six horse, always got your back, recent win, coming from a little off the pace, going three and a half furlongs, and uh, he looks like he's okay to on the stretch out, he's another son of Bakken who's done so well this year. But yeah. I went seven, eight, and six. Uh, I went. Uh, I, I agree. Torino Grand looked so good winning last time. I, and I don't think he has to have the lead. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he's got Enrique to work out a trip for him. But just he, visually, that was impressive last mm -hmm. time. And, and he's the horse to beat in here. Uh, I put always got your back in the second spot. Broken's yeah. maiden going three and a half. He's not a three and a half horse. He's out of always brass. He's a half brother yeah. to brass and gold. 
out of that good sire, as I mentioned before, back, and actually I got a Lent in the back and one, two in here, no surprise, uh -huh. as they're th both those two-year-old uh, sires having great years. Uh, and I threw in uh, the five, walk in the walk. So the horse ran second behind Infinite Patience uh, the day that uh, Infinite Patience broke her maiden. She was four ahead of Enchanted Lady, who came back to run a good second behind Infinite Patience last time. Went in for 16, got some confidence. So the fact that she won for 16 and, you know, this one run for 25 or that, I don't think, I didn't take that really into account. I think she got a win under her belt mm -hmm. and she fits well in here. I went seven, six, and five in the six. On to the seventh, three and up, 62.50, going six and a half. Looks like there's some speed in here. And I went to, I went to one of the speed horses, cracked down of uh, the Patty Leaning Barn, uh, beat a Dietrich two back, got a 68 buyer, come back with a 73 buyer. Couldn't keep up with Bluegrass Angus, but no surprise there. They went, you know, very quick. And Bluegrass Angus down this level is always super dangerous. He is going to have to deal with Optic on the head end, but uh, I think Crackdown, I got a good feeling about him. He's lightly raced this year. His last two races are by far his best. Granted, it, it was off a big class drop, but his last two races are very good. Amadeo suits him well. I'm going with Crackdown over Aditya. If the uh, pace scenario does form in front of him, Adicha looks like the best horse to run them down uh, in the stretch. Cool, old, classy horse. Always liked Adicha. And I threw an Optic, the other speed horse. Maybe he can kick free from Crackdown. But I see those two. I, those are the three I like in any order. I went two, five, and four. Yeah, I, I left out Crackdown. I just thought he might get caught up in the pace. He sat a good trip last time behind the Bluegrass Angus. Yeah. And it wasn't really a pace duel at all. He just kind of sat three legs off. just kind of watched him, yeah. And then Bluegrass Angus was getting tired in the stretch because he hadn't raced for a long time. And uh, Crackdown was getting to him, uh, get, you know, nearing the line. But still, it was a good race nonetheless. I went to the four optic. Uh, uh, Khaki's Command, Bill Smoking Bullet, and absolutely stylish. Finished ahead of him last time, and I don't see any of those in here. It's a good so, race, uh, yeah. Uh, he did lose to a ditch at two back. Uh, he's just a cool horse that shows good speed. Gonzalez should suit him to a T. I put a ditch in for second. He's a versatile type. Uh, you know, he just can't beat the eight thousand dollar types. But in, for sixty two fifty, he's usually he's right on the money. Solid. And yeah. I got him in for second. I put Santa War for third. He returns to a sprint after a series of distance races. He can sprint, and, and uh, Jose Asensio uh, gets the call. But I, I like. I guess you, you would need a few in here, but I went four, five, and six in the seventh. On to the eighth race, uh, four, or sixty-two fifty, uh, eight thousand down to six thousand. Yeah. Uh, Phillies mm -hmm. and mares here going a mile and a sixteenth. So many of them in for the six thousand mm -hmm. to get themselves eligible yep. for the winter uh, bonus money. Non three, yes, yeah, so it is. A, it's a, it's it's a six non three. That's yep, what it is. That's basically what it Everybody's is. In for six. Everyone's in for the six, but yeah. it is an eight thousand technically claimer. Yeah, non two, non three life, uh, non three lifetime. I ended up on the three snappy ginger, big class drop. Yes. A uh, good third, two back at the $16,000 level behind Spot On and Chrissy. Uh, she should be the boss in here if she still has anything close to yeah. her top form. I like even on the stretch out. Some of her mile 16th races were very good. She was second behind We Are Free, who was really going well at the time. Yeah. And uh, I think Snappy Ginger's the one to beat. The six horse Largo, I was been impressed ever since they've stretched this one out. And uh, really shouldn't really improve the, the daughter of looking at Lucky. And I put the one horse Kensington Market. Don't think the mile of 16th will bother this one. And I, I like her to be in the mix as well. I left out her every wish, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see her on the board either, but I thought Snappy Ginger on the class drop was going to be really tough, and I thought Largo with the speed would be the next one. I went three six one. Yeah, I don't know much to add except that when I did this this morning, I was kind mm -hmm. of in a rush and I was going through quick, and I did them, and then I look, oh, Miss Snappy Ginger, <laughs> and then I mean, obviously looks like the yeah. horse to beat in here uh, on the class drop. Uh, 16 on three, two starts to go, just gets beat by Spot On and Chrissy. Uh, she's been tough here all year long. Snappy Ginger, I agree. Largo in the second spot. Uh, as you mentioned, she's looking at Lucky. And the, since they started finally, uh, you, you know, late in her four-year-old year, running her long, those have been the best races of her career. Largo for me in second. And uh, I agree, Kansas to Market in third. Same horse, the same order. Three, six, and one. As well as, for me, as well as Mike in the eighth. On to the ninth. Last race of the year. Got to go with my buddy Troop on online. Uh, wow. Well, yeah, I like Troop. Well, it's my horse. No, why not? He's my guy. Maven's having a great fall. So is Jose Asensio. Uh, hadn't run since July. Came back. He hadn't run since July. He runs October 13th and wins off that long layoff. And uh, I loved him that day. Mm -hmm. He can go long. He broke his maiden going long. I'm going to go with Troupon Online to beat Jax Rain, the Gilker horse that just ran for 10 down in Seattle and won by almost five under our old friend Kevin Krieger. 
Uh, he looks to be probably the horse to beat in here. Got a 64 buyer in there, and I threw in. He's got Ego coming off a good third by an absolutely stylish and square dancer in his latest. And uh, anytime he was in these eight non threes, he was tough. Second beat ahead by Coat of Arms, second behind Transplant. Mm -hmm. Put him in for third, but I'm going with Triple Armand. Uh, I went to the six horse Jack's Rain on the class drop, uh, you know, getting into a c conditional race as well. I know running at straight three year olds throughout much of the year, but uh, so I think Jack's Rain is going to be pretty dangerous yeah, sitting no, just definitely. off of You Don't Own Me. I like the five horse as well. I like You Don't Own Me. This horse uh, battled back on Next Out Winner. I kissed Ivy, yeah. and uh, I kissed Ivy actually stuck ahead in front. And this horse was kind of playing possum with uh, Amadeo Perez, and he re rallied down on the inside and really galloped out well and really showed me that. This horse was still had lots left. Yeah. This horse can go long. Might even be what he wants to do. Uh, so I'll, I'll put this one in for second and I'll put the one. But I could easily see it winning. And put the one horse. I agree. He's got ego in for third. I left your man. Troop on online. Out. Sorry, Rob. He's uh, going to go out. He's going to win the last race. The closer. Six, five, and one in the uh, Sunday finale, in the season finale. Uh, that'll do it for our analysis of uh, closing day. Next up on screen uh, will be a quick recap of our selections. Back in race number one, I did go to the one. Uh, Jack, don't drink. Going to go one, four, and three. Race number two went to the tube tattooed kitty over the five and one. Race number three, uh, probably one of the best bets of the day, the two, mousey mouse. Yeah. Going to go two, three, and four. Race number four, I went to the five, ace deuce over the one, cyclone down, and put the three hearts head for third. Race number five, my, probably my longest price of the day. Uh, number four, Harry's Hammer. Going to go four, three, and one. Race number six, once again a favorite, number seven, Torino Ground, I'm going to go seven, eight, and six. Race number seven, I went to the four, Optic over the five, Aditya, and the six, Sanawar. Race number eight, the class dropping, number three, Snappy Ginger over the six, Largo, and the one, Kensington Market. And in the finale, I went to the six, Jack's Rain, you're going to go six, five, and one. You got Jack's... Uh yeah, Jackson. To the, the bookends, book first and second. I agree with Mike in the first. I went to the one, Jack, don't drink, over the four and the five. In the second, I'm going to go to the four, sweet 16, over the one and the two. In the third, I agree with Mike, probably best by the day, number two, mousy, mousy, over the three and the one. In the fourth, we agree on number five, ace, deuce, over the one and the three. In the fifth, I'm going to go to the five, the chances are, over the three and the four. In the six, we both, I like the look of this uh, two-year-old, number seven, Torino Grand for Ed Claggett, over the six and the five. In the seventh, Mike went to Optic. I'm going to the other speed horse. Number two, Crackdown over the five and the four. In the eighth, we agree on number three, Snappy Ginger over the six and the one. And in the nightcap, going to my buddy. Cashed him on him a nine to one earlier this year. Yes, Troop did. on Troop Online. On. Stick with those ones. That's, good. that's right. Number three, Troop Online over the six and the one. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Hopefully, you enjoyed uh, the show. The uh, season. As we bring down the curtain yeah. on the 2019 uh, season at Hastings Racecourse. Uh, of course, uh, we will be doing a Breeders' Cup yep. show. Uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, check the Derby Bar and Grill website as to what day it'll be up. And uh, it'll be Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Wednesday but, for uh, sure. We'll Wednesday have, we'll for sure. Probably Wednesday, cl Wednesday yeah. as the races uh, do go on Friday, November the first, and Saturday, uh, November the second. So uh, lots of still, lots of big racing. Uh, uh, the weekend after yeah. closing day at Hastings. So, well, thanks everyone for tuning in throughout the year for your loyal support. We appreciate it. Uh, uh, you taking yeah. time out of your day to, to, to enjoy our little podcasts and uh, hopefully giving you some winners throughout the season. On behalf of Drew, and uh, thanks to Jason and Ryan, our yeah. crew here. Uh, thanks to them. For, uh, they have other jobs here and they come down. Uh, come down and put up with us. Put up with us. For an hour yeah. every, every Thursday. Yes, they do. God bless them. Yes. <laughs> Couldn't do it without him. Yes, and of course, that's Glenn, correct. Uh, yes, we do, Mr. Todd, who we of course uh, puts put the show puts on. Puts the on show on. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so good luck in your wagers on closing day, and uh, look forward to seeing everyone next week uh, for the Breeders' Cup edition yeah. of Handicappers Corner. Good luck, everyone. <laughs>